it's uh, five past one and uh, we can start um, because of the new ideas uh, from our director are never ending this time for the first time we are broadcasting from a drug a real drug consumption rooms i'm at the mcdda but my colleagues and the director himself are in a drug consumption room here in, uh, in lisbon i don't take more of your time and I give immediately the floor to Alexis Gustil, our director, for opening this webinar today. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Marika. Good afternoon. Kalimera Sas. Boa tarde. Uh, hello, everybody. We are very happy, very proud uh, to welcome you for this new webinar of the MCDDA. And as Marika said, this time, uh, another innovation. We, we organize the webinar at, and it takes place uh, starting from the place where things are happening here in Lisbon, in uh, Ares de Pinal, uh, together with the colleagues of the DCR that was opened last year. It's a, it's a very important meeting for us, uh, not only the webinar, but also today and tomorrow, uh, we have a European seminar uh, with uh, representatives from DCRs from many countries. We are going to explore uh, the ways in which the work and the situation has changed in the recent years, and also to explore together uh, how can the EMCDDA be more useful or even more useful uh, to support their work. Uh, we have activities that uh, we have projects, we have plans. One of them is uh, to provide more uh, structured support for the evaluation of DCRs. Uh, that is a, a very important challenge for the DCRs, but also for decision makers who take the decision to open some uh, such uh, uh, drug consumption rooms in their country. It's also extremely important for the MCDD and useful because uh, with the work of the DCRs, it's a unique, uh, unique opportunity to take the pearls of uh, what is changing in, at the level of the consumption at local level. And uh, for instance, uh, since the, 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 the DCR opened in, uh, here in Lisbon last year, already one or two months after the opening, uh, the colleagues were uh, sharing with us the information that 50% of the clients were coming to consume crack cocaine which is uh, something that was uh, a bit surprising, given that it was not that obvious that there was such a, an important consumption of crack cocaine. While also in uh, Athens, for instance, in the, in, the, in the drug consumption room that has opened recently, uh, there is also a section in and a space in the DCR for the consumption of crystal meth which is called the shisha in Greece, uh, which shows also it's a, it's a way to reflect, to show that the reality, the conditions of work, the innovation at the level of DCRs have really changed a lot. Uh, there were very interesting changes uh, over the last five to 10 years. Uh, what we know and the way uh, the DCRs are operating today is uh, partly the same, at the same time, quite different from what it was 10 to 15 years ago. And also we have more than 100 DCRs that are operating or that soon will, will operate on the territory of the European Union. And we, that we at the EMCDDA, we receive at least once per month a request from a national or local parliament or authorities, municipality, uh, to share what do we know, what is the best practice uh, concerning DCRs, what are the indications for the opening of DCRs? What are the things, what are the counter indications? What are the, the questions or the key criteria people should pay attention when they have the project uh, uh, and, and starting, of course, from a diagnosis of the situation. So plenty of activities in which we are fully in, engaged. And uh, as I said in the opening of the meeting this morning, the EMCDDA is there to serve to serve practitioners, to serve decision makers, and ultimately to, to provide support to be useful for people who are using drugs, their families, their relatives, people who, who live with them. So very, very interesting focus. Uh, perspectives for further development, we are going to, uh, to discuss today and tomorrow with the colleagues. And uh, today for this webinar, the first that is on site, and uh, I received already a few suggestions for the next uh, uh, on site uh, visit. So maybe one day in the Metadon bus of uh, Arish Dupignal or in, a, in another country, another 
city. We have uh, three persons that uh, uh, are going to share with us, the, well, four persons who are going to share uh, with us their, their experience. Uh, Noela Girona from Barcelona. Uh, we have Roberta Reis and Polo Caldera from Ares do Pinal. Ares do Pinal, this is where we are today. Uh, and as I said, they opened last year uh, the, the Salad de Consumo Vigiado. Um, and, and of course, we have also Athanasios Theocharis um, uh, from Okana in uh, Greece. Uh, in, in Greece, uh, Okana in the past uh, opened the first experiment of, uh, of a drug consumption room that was called Odyssea, uh, that uh, was not maintained. There were challenges, difficulties. Uh, now there is a, a new initiative, a new program uh, that was uh, opened uh, two or three months ago. I had the privilege to, to visit uh, the center even before its opening. And again, it's a, it's a very rich illustration with the three experiences and the colleagues that are with us today to see what are the differences. And in fact, uh, for me, I think it illustrates that uh, now more and more, we need to look at the drug consumption rooms as a key instruments, part of the portfolio of interventions uh, for harm reduction. But this means that we need to be aware of what are the changes in the addictive behaviors and also the changes in the risk behaviors, because that's on that basis that in Athens, if needed, people can consume shisha or that in Lisbon, people consume uh, a crack cocaine. Or if I remember my first visit to the drug consumption room in Copenhagen, that uh, after a few months, they were surprised also to see that 50% uh, of people were coming to use cocaine. It was not foreseen, but it's not a problem because the question is, those programs are there to help reduce the risks. So we need to start from the reality and not from the ideology. That's the contribution that we try to make. And uh, I thank not only the speakers, but also Marika, Ithiar, Indave, uh, who is responsible for harm reduction at the MCDDA, and Alessandro Pirona, who is organize, organizing together with her uh, the seminar with the DCRs of the European Union in Lisbon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexis. Always very inspiring uh, introduction. I also have heard new ideas <laughs> to follow up. And thank you also for having introduced Isia Rindave, who joined uh, relatively recently our, uh, our unit, our agency, and, and she will take care of, of uh, harm reduction. And today she will chair uh, this webinar. So I switch off my camera. I remind in, in the backstage to help if it is needed. Thank you, Isia. The floor is it. Thank you, Marika. And thank you, Alexis. So um, I'm honored to be chairing this first seminar, or this first webinar, sorry, on uh, DCRs here on site in Aristo Pinal. And I hope that all these new ideas will in fact uh, become true. I will not steal too much time from uh, our distinguished speakers who have been uh, already been introduced by our uh, director and there's not much more to add than to say that I'm very happy that you are here. And um, I would like to uh, pass directly to the first question and I will give the floor uh, to each of the speakers as um, we have uh, the, the availability. So um, the first question for you will be, what are DCRs? So the current reality you are living as some of you older DCRs or some of you relatively new DCRs in Europe, could you please share your insights and your experience? Um, let us start with uh, Roberta Reis and Paolo. You can share your screen. Do you have problems? Uh, no, no, it's okay. 
Um, good afternoon to, to all. Um, I'm Roberta Reis from Alice de Pinhal. Uh, we are very happy to this, uh, this event uh, is here in our DCR. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, so I'll, I'll start to, to answer the, the first question. And I think it's very important uh, to us to reinforce that uh, DCRs um, are protected places, use it for safer consumption um, of pre-obtained substance, pre-obtained drugs, uh, what means that the clients must have the drug uh, with him um, on a non-judgmental uh, environment and under supervision vision of uh, training this stuff. Um, when you think about this year, they, they can be fixed or they can be mobile uh, and that they are used, uh, located in areas where uh, is an open drug scene. In our case, in our DCR, we are a fixed one and uh, we are the first one in Portugal after 20 years, okay? So uh, to, to talk about uh, uh, the main goals of uh, a DCR, uh, it's to prevent overdoses and intervene in overdoses that occur on site. I can tell you that since uh, we are open, uh, about one year, we have uh, 18 overdoses happening here uh, on this on this site, uh, successfully reverted. Um, it's important to provide sterile equipment uh, in order to not spread uh, infectious disease. Uh, and uh, we educate uh, the clients for a safe uh, consumption practices. Um, when you think about uh, operational models of uh, uh, DCR, it can be a specialized service with only consumption rooms. Uh, it can be a mobile service that can go around the city and uh, at the places that are uh, prob problematic areas, or it can be integrated service. In, uh, in our case, in our DCA, we, we choose to, for the option of an integrated service. It makes sense for us because we are located in a historically problematic area uh, with uh, traffic and drug, drug use. Uh, and with a significant number of uh, homeless people, 21% of our population, um, who have other needs besides a uh, consumption room. So um, our service is uh, composed by um, two supervised consumption rooms, a smoked one and an injected one, um, a recession, it's where the, the client goes uh, when they, they come here for the first time. We have a coffee desk where uh, we can, we're able to offer little snacks and coffee and tea. We have psychosocial support. We have pet sizing service because we understand that we have many clients that have animals and this is, can, be, that can be an obstacle to, to, to come to a service. We have laundry and coats bank. We have bathroom, uh, nursing and medical consultations. Uh, we have screening for infections, disease, and we have a community team that goes around the, the neighborhood every day uh, to collect all the, the, the drug uh, paraphernalia that uh, is uh, in, in the neighborhood. So like you can see on, on uh, these images. Um, we we can talk uh, we can uh, we can see that uh, in the first year um, we have much more people that smoke than people who inject. So this this is the kind of thing that make us uh, think about uh, the roots of of substance administration and the importance of have uh, um, a smoked room uh, included in our service too. Um, we are a multidisciplinary team uh, with, uh, composed by psychologists, social workers, nurse, educator, educators, physician, and a psychiatry. Um, I, I can tell you a, a little bit of uh, our history, but Paul will tell you about more after. But in 2017, a diagnosis was conducted to understand the dimension of the, the problem and choose uh, the exact area of the DCR. 
in the in the beginning, uh, in, we fought with this uh, diagnosis that we can enroll at the end of one year 300 people. But right now, after one year, we have more than 1,300 people enrolled in our service. And so this show us the, how this facility is so needed for uh, for this uh, community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can we give Athanasius the floor, possibly? Yeah. Hello. I hope that you hear me. Thank you for uh, inviting us and inviting uh, the DCR of Athens in this uh, beautiful meeting. Uh, it is of great honor for us to show our work. Uh, we are the newest, I think, uh, one of the newest uh, DCRs in uh, Europe now. Uh, as uh, Alexis uh, said, uh, there were some efforts in the past, but uh, uh, there were other obstacles that didn't uh, come out to work the DCR in a better uh, function. So we came with a legal framework and we have our new DCR. Uh, can we move to the slides? Uh, as you know, our organization is the biggest uh, public service provider in Greece for the addiction treatment. And uh, through our pillars, we have also the harm reduction where we uh, put our uh, DCR functioning. So uh, can we move to the next slide, please? The first DCR in Athens with concrete and specific requirements and legal framework uh, opened uh, almost one and a half month uh, in April. Uh, Mr. Guzdel came and uh, saw it. We had a great support. And uh, this was the support of, uh, first of all, Alexis Guzdel and uh, the president of the Hellenic democracy, the president of the government, the prime minister, uh, as well the ministry of health, the minister and the sub minister and the deputy minister. And of course, we had the support of the mayor of uh, Athens, the city where uh, the DCR is uh, seated. So we have 12 uh, spaces for safe injecting and uh, or um, inhaling use. We can hear you, Athanasius. I can hear you. I can. Ah, you can. Yeah. Ah, okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. okay, go ahead. Okay, so we have 12 spaces for safe uh, injecting and inhaling use. Uh, it is a need that, uh, as Alexis said, we have found out that there is an increasing trend in uh, the field for uh, inhaling use, and especially of that uh, uh, crystal meth, uh, shisa, as uh, they called it in uh, Greek, uh, in uh, Greek field. So uh, we have put inhaling use in uh, within the DCR. We have uh, a waiting room for the beneficiaries after they do the uh, use. Uh, we have a fully equipped infirmary with all the primary health care and uh, all the overdose treatment. And I will put an asterisk. We finally have uh, nasal naloxone uh, for use in uh, Greece. Uh, and our professionals can use it. Uh, we have also some uh, uh, a place for counseling and psychological support. Uh, following our holistic approach, we offer primary healthcare services. We offer the counseling support and uh, we try to meet all the basic needs for personal hygiene, nutrition or clothing for uh, most of the people who come in the DCR, which are uh, homeless. And uh, of course, we try to connect them and to refer them to other uh, services of our programs and of course, uh, treatment programs that we have. Uh, can we go to the next slide to see how this uh, thing uh, happened? Uh, finally, as I told you before, we had uh, uh, the formulation of the legal framework in uh, April of uh, 2020, uh, and uh, we had uh, the the, the, the law uh, for the first time giving a specific and concrete operational framework for the DCRs for mobile and stable ones. Uh, next, we went to June 
on uh, 2021 and uh, we submitted uh, a proposal to the Ministry of Health in order to, or to open uh, a stable and uh, mobile DCRs in Athens, where the most of the problem is uh, cited. In uh, November of the same year, we had the authorization for the stable uh, this year and it was issued and we had also the permission for the uh, for opening of the DC, the mobile DCRs uh, in uh, Athens. As I told you before, we have also in the same month in November, uh, we had the uh, expansion of the use of uh, naloxone uh, using nasal naloxone for uh, professionals and street workers uh, Biocana and others, uh, uh, organ other organization. So we reached the point this April 2022 to open the first DCR in Athens, Greece, and in Southeast Europe, uh, and to offer its uh, services. Thank you very much, Athenisius. Um, the floor is yours, Noelia. Thank you, Ithiar. So first of all, I have to say thank you to, for the invitation and thank you to all the people who are joining the, um, the webinar. So I'm going to um, tell you a little bit about the work on DCRs of Barcelona concretely. Um, when, when the colleagues of the MCDDA um, asked to me um, for the war, what are the, the drug consumption rooms and, and what are the current reality, the first thing that I have to say is that the drug consumption rooms have to be safe places for the people who are taking drugs. If we, if we think about um, places for the people, these places have to be safe and they have to be in a comfortable way there. So which kind of services we have? We have two drug consumption rooms in Barcelona in, in Casa Baluarte in the drug consumption rooms that I, that I manage. Um, we have a heat and cold fit place and we have uh, treatment programs. Barcelona have um, a specific model on, on drug addiction treatment and, and attention that um, um, they want to, to, um, to share the treatment area and the harm reduction area. So all the people that come to the service can use the harm reduction area and the treatment area. Okay, um, we have to, don't, don't lose the, the approach, the comprehensive approach to drug use and addiction. And in the drug consumption rooms, we have the, um, the role to detect new trends and to detect what's happening with the drug use. And all the time, we have to think about strategic lines on drug intervention and, and new approaches and new tools and new, all the new things that, that we need to implement with the, for the people who use drugs. So. Another thing that, that I think about when I when I have to think with the current reality from the drug consumption rooms in, in Europe and concretely in Barcelona, uh, I need to think about the fight about the stigma that all the people that are taking drugs are suffering. We have a lot of programs, but we don't we don't have to forget the stigma that they are suffering. And we have to work well, about the stigma and we have to work with the community. They have to be part of the community and the DCRs are part of the communities. So that's one point that we have to be working all the time with. So another thing that, that it's super important is the empowering of people who use drugs. They, they have to know which um, obligations have, they have to know which rights have, they have to know where they can do, where they cannot do, how to wear um, something, how to manage her drugs, how to deal with the police, with the judges, with the health services, with the social services. They have to, they have to know um, how to manage all her life. So one of our objectives is empowering the people who use drugs to, do, to be able to do all these things. Um, we have to keep in mind all the time the, this this we, um, this phase, you know, this the supper and punish. We have to keep in mind all the time these words, and we have to contribute to the visibilization of the people that are taking drugs, not only the services or not only the programs. You know, the, these people have to be visibilized too. And um, if I have to think in in the people, in the people who use drugs. 
um, one of the basic things that we have to do are training all the people who use drugs in overdose prevention and attention. In Barcelona, we train all the PWOTs and we train all the professionals that works on the DCRs. Um, we put it all of day in a program that, that have the name Take Home Naloxone. All of they have, have no to manage an overdose and all of they have naloxone kits um, to intervene this naloxone. Um, we have to listen to the, the B Woods as key actors. They are experts on her lives. They are experts on drugs. They are experts in all the new trends and all the new things related with drugs. So we have to take it them in all the things that we are thinking to implement. They are information providers. And they have to be an active part of the DCR. Without the clients or without the pivots, we cannot run. So we have to keep in mind all of this block of things about pivots because if they are not in the center of the DCRs, the DCRs cannot give a, a good attention or a good problems. So thank you for this first part. Thank you, Noelia. <clears throat> So um, I hear loud and uh, clearly from all panelists that uh, there is not one definition that is a, a more an integrative approach. There, there's more about safe place and integrated approach into the community, providing multiple services, also training and prevention efforts, programs. And in that sense, I think the, we can also see that the, the experiences have been very different for those that have just started over those that have been doing this work for a while and those that have been really long time doing this. Um, and uh, I will use this to pass to the next question and ask our panelists what they have uh, in their experience found were the main facilitating factors or obstacles in implementing and also in running a DZR. Um, can we, we will start again with um, uh, Roberta and uh, Paolo. Can you share your screen, please? Now, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Good afternoon to, to everybody. Uh, first of all, to, to answer the, this question, I suppose it's, we, we have to, to split in implementation and running a, a DCR. Um, talking about the, the, the implementation, uh, I have some kind of technical problem here. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Well, we will try again. Again. <laughs> ah. When? Well, okay. Now, uh, when we talk about the, the implementation, I, I suppose the challenge is to uh, know the, our obstacles and turn the, that obstacles into facilitating factors. So um, the first obstacle that uh, I think the, in the, a lot of countries um, deal with, it's the, 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 the law, the, um, the fact of the law, there are uh, an obstacle to the implementation of the uh, DCR. Um, luckily in Portugal, we have this uh, um, fantastic law from 2001 that in the chapter 10 uh, planned the, the opening and implementation of the DCRs. Um, the truth is that, um, so that can go to the facilitating factors, but the truth is that um, it took 20 years to, to open the first DCR in Portugal. So what happened? Of course, we have the, the, the mobile DCR in 2019 uh, here in Lisbon, but to a fixed DCR, it took uh, 20 years. So it brings me to the second obstacle, it's the political will. Um, perhaps in the um, 20 years ago, the consum the, um, mostly the, the people that inject drugs, the consumption are uh, decreasing and probably the, the, the decision makers uh, thought that they are not necessary to have uh, drug consumption rooms and the political will to open one is, isn't there. 
Uh, meanwhile, uh, with the, the crisis of 2008 and 2010, there are increasing of the consumption and the diagnosis that Roberta um, talked about before uh, uh, show us that the, it's a really need to, to open the, the, the DCR. And the political will change. The, the municipality of Lisbon, it's, uh, they do a lot of efforts to, to open these, uh, these DCRs. And then I suppose the, the political uh, will go to the facilitating factor again. So the third obstacle, it's the stigma. And um, because when you talk about the, the problem of the of drug consumptions, everybody agrees with the um, implementation of DCRs, but the problem is that nobody wants the DCR in the that back uh, my, my background uh, my backyard. So um, how can we manage that situation? I suppose, in my humble opinion, that we have to uh, choose carefully the, the place that we put the, the DCR. And in our case here in Portugal, um, we have this uh, um, sadly famous neighborhood, this Casal Ventoso, that in the 19s and in the, the 80s, it's the biggest supermarket of drugs in Europe. And what happened? It's when the, the municipality of Lisbon uh, starts demolition the, the neighborhood, they uh, change the people to that new neighborhood that is in blue. Uh, our DCR is in yellow. So we are right in the, the action zone. So we are near the, the, the traffic uh, areas and the, the, the places that the people buy, the, buy drugs. Um, and that is a facilitating factor because we are not taking uh, a problem to a neighbor that don't have drug problems. The problem is already here and we are coming to try to help to the, the not to solve, but to the, the problem. So then we have to hear the, the local community. And here in Portugal, the, the local community and uh, when we start the meetings with them, uh, we listen to the, their needs and they have a lot of things. Oh, we are not against the, the, the DCR, but look, we need a bus. We need um, a system of water that is not good for 20 years. And we hear the, the, their needs and these guys have right. So what the municipality of Lisbon in a clever way do is, okay, let's negotiate. We will give you that. And the, the reality is that we don't have problems with the local community now. So to the implementation, I suppose it's uh, looking to your obstacles and turning to uh, facilitating factors. Of course, it's easier to speak than to, to do it, but I suppose it's possible. Here in Portugal, it, it was possible. Um, now we're talking about the running. The, the, the DCR is now open. Let's see what the, the, the we have to do to, to running successful the uh, DCR. Maintaining the, the contacts with the local community, it's uh, very important. Then um, work closely to decision makers. They have to know what our um, what is the the question that all every day we we have here in the, the DCR and most important is here uh, here the clients um, what we we have here it's work closely to to them the um, Noelia said it's uh, it's DCRs must be a safe place and it exactly the, uh, that the, um, this, the DCRs must be um, a safe place and the people must um, have a sense of belonging to the, to, the, to the DCR. And to do that, they have to feel that their needs are heard from the, um, the, the, the team. Of course, not everything uh, that they ask us, uh, it's possible to do, but we do a lot of things that they ask us, and I, I suppose they have uh, the, this sense of belonging to the, to the DCR. Uh, and finally, the team. Uh, sometimes it's a very hard to, to work here. 
and we have to, to listen to, to our team and to pay attention to them because it's, uh, it's a pleasure to work, uh, to work here, but sometimes it's quite difficult. Thank you very much, Paolo. Um, can we give the floor to Athanasius? So uh, the challenges that we had uh, as we tried to open the uh, Athens this year is to meet the needs of around a population of uh, 800 to 1,000 uh, drug users in the center of the city and a little bit wider. And of course, the community and all the stigma uh, concept that uh, follows the drug use. Uh, of, we talk about a high-risk population and uh, we had to, to, to uh, reduce the concentration of this population and, of course, to reduce it, all the transmitted uh, diseases and prevent the outbreaks among drug users because we have the, uh, the paradigm, the, the example of uh, 12, 2012 in Athens where we had a big outbreak of HIV. Uh, the treatment of overdoses, which is a very common phenomenon in uh, the streets of uh, Athens and in parks, uh, as well as all the crime that might be connected or associated with the drug use and uh, the meeting places of uh, the uh, drug users. Uh, as we told you in the beginning and um, in parallel as the Portuguese case, uh, we had the this uh, lack of a political frame or legal framework, and uh, so there was this kind of no framework and no uh, law for uh, opening a DCR. But uh, the this government that is now uh, on uh, has recognized the need to establish to establish a DCR has put that. Uh, in the pre-election uh, program. So it was um, a thing that uh, they wanted to do it. And uh, when they came into power, they put the law and uh, enforced uh, this uh, situation. So uh, all this uh, thing was to find uh, this facility to uh, help people to have the right to access the treatment and to be for everyone. This was the, the main challenge that we had to communicate either to the politicians or to the people in the community. In this, in all this uh, concept, we had also to face this COVID period, which uh, was a challenge for us because uh, uh, it was it triggered Okana in order to expand its services and to operate uh, this year as well as other services like a hostel or uh, day centers we opened lately and to help people uh, all the homeless people drug users all the people that were in need for uh, further and integrated into uh, holistic uh, services. Can we go to the next slide and say the, uh, my personal uh, experience is uh, that uh, we had um, very uh, strong support from the government. Uh, as I told you, we had a very strong support from the local authorities, which is amazing for a mayor the mayor of Athens, uh, who was uh, very supportive to us. And uh, we will tell you in the uh, next uh, uh, discussion that uh, we had a very uh, good cooperation throughout the COVID period. And we made this shelter with the municipality of Athens. He recognized the problem and he uh, he's very helpful to every uh, action that we do in order to minimize the problem in the center of uh, the capital of Greece, uh, Athens. And of course, we worked within the community in the region where the DCR uh, functions. Uh, we, we went to the shops, we went to people working by the DCR. We uh, sometimes uh, needed to uh, 
buy things in order to support this uh, their professional activity and in order to show that they are not different uh, we we support them and we are in the same uh, society in the same environment so we need to uh, coexist uh, and the most uh, exciting was that around 10 months uh, were to have this uh, from the decision to open the DCR, which is, I think, very a few months uh, from the cases that we hear uh, in all over the Europe. The, the main message that we communicated was that the DCRs are so important to meet the people's needs and to achieve the, this opening of uh, DCR, uh, advocacy and working uh, uh, should be uh, together uh, going. So the key is to make uh, the government, the community and the local authorities to be aware of uh, the need of uh, the need of Adesia. So here you can see some photos uh, from the from our uh, Steki Sarada Exi, Steki 46. Uh, the word is Steki is the place where they are gathering. The name is from the drug users uh, themselves. And uh, you can see the road is in one of our premises. The inside place that they have, the place that they can uh, eat or make a, a drink or tea or coffee. And then there is uh, the uh, supervised drug use uh, uh, place, all the area, you see the places, you see the material that we have, we have all the equipment and we have also the scanning of um, uh, the drug users when uh, they want to have safer use. And uh, of course we have uh, all the equipped uh, nursery, the naloxone, and as you see, the last uh, on the right picture is the inhaling room that we have for CISA, a need where we found out through our outreach and uh, street work actions. And uh, from last August, we give them material for safer use uh, for uh, people who use uh, CISA crystal meth in uh, the field. We have bought pipes with uh, uh, several uh, things to put uh, for each user uh, in order not to exchange uh, between the, the users and to avoid all the transmission of uh, diseases. So the first data, we don't have so many data because we are almost one and a half month uh, functioning. Uh, as I told you, we have uh, opened in April and uh, the first 15 days we had five, five, uh, 55 visits and uh, 18 supervised drug use cases, cases. During May, we have 790 visits and 20, 20, 222 supervised drug use cases. It's Enormous, uh, enormous uh, numbers. Uh, uh, we have reached the 240 supervised drug use cases and it's increasing. And this is a point that I should put an asterisk uh, saying that uh, Alexis Guzdel has right. We have um, uh, noticed that the drug use is changing. And now, for example, we have much more uh, use of inhaling uh, drug use and CISA use, uh, where the seeds are not uh, always for heroin use, they are mostly for inhaling use. Okay, thank you very much, Athanasius. Uh, Noelia, the floor is yours. Thank you. So about the facilitators and obstacles to, to implement and run a DCR, I have to say that in Barcelona, our first DCR uh, was opened at uh, 2001. Um, Cas Baluar, the DCR that I ran, uh, was opened at 2004. And in 2022, we have uh, 14 DCRs in Barcelona, only in Barcelona. Um, Fixed and mobile DCRs. Um, one facilitator that's super important is that all the DCRs that are in the city, they are running by expert NGOs. 
um, and all the um, all the drug strategy on the city have a political consensus. Every four year, all the political parties of Barcelona they have to meet and take a consensus on on drug policies on the city. So this is a good thing for for the DCRs and for the and for the drug treatment and and harm reduction programs. And all the, um, all the centers in Barcelona have to be integral drug care centers, have to have, to have harm reduction programs and treatment programs. So these are the, the main facilitators to, to implementing a DCR for us. So you can see on the, um, on the past um, slide, the annual plan of drugs and some images about our mayor, Ada Colau and the parliament where they where they take all these decisions and they they make um, a good dissemination on mass media all the time when they make this kind of, of decisions. <clears throat> the next slide, please. So and the obstacles, Barcelona have always have a, a big not in my backyard um, effect. Since the opening of the first drug consumption room, we have a lot of or not my backyard. Um, effect and now in 2022 we have as you can see on the left corner on the right corner sorry of the image we have a platform for the closing of casual art our this year uh, it was a twitter profile of a group of, of neighbors that they live super near of the dcr and they they have a good organization to share all the disappointment, all the disagrees, and all the things that it's happening all the time on the street, related or not related with drugs and drug users, but they put it all the things and all the responsibility there, and they have um, a high impact on the community. And and you can see that on the in the center we have um, an image with a lot of policy um, cards. We have policy 10 hours per day in front of the DCR, like a municipality strategy to, to deal with the violence or with the uh, reported insecurity of the neighbors. So the municipality, they put us 10 hours of, of police in, the, in front of the door. We have to deal with the police every day, the outreach team. We have an outreach team of 12 workers. Um, I have to meet the police every week to, to make engagement and to make a consensus on the intervention in the, in the place that we are situated. And, and the mass media makes a lot of work <laughs> to, to, you, to share all the things that happen around the, the DCI. You can see on the, on the left corner um, an article that say that um, the DCI of Trasanes, that is the, the place that we are looking at, um, it was converting in a point of drug dealing and, and drug selling. So we have every day, every month notices like this. We, we are in the point of view of um, mass media all the time, neighbors, uh, political parties that try to manage these things in her own benefit, but they cannot do it because there's a pact and they have to respect this pact, this, this accord. But sometimes they try to to manage the, um, the drug Sena to for her benefit. And then um, we are conscious that since four years, um, we are in the middle of the community. Four years ago, we are situated in a, in a specific and a little bit more far place, five streets far, but we are alone there. We don't have neighbors there. And then in our, in our change of place four years um, ago, we start to, to make a, a really convenience with neighbors. And that was uh, one of the obstacles that, that running this year have, because we have to every day, every week, um, deal with these things that, well, no, that we have to be more, um, be more careful. We have to do all the things that we do, super careful and thinking about the community all the time and and trying that the that the drug users be part of of this these careful steps that we are taking since 18 years. 
So thank you, Noelia. Um, I think it's very interesting that all of you pointed somehow uh, towards that the barriers or the challenges can be turned into opportunities and that you all had some strategies to turn them into opportunities and in fact, pretty successfully in many cases. And um, I will use this also to ask you now very briefly to give me an idea of what do you think is the future of DZRs in Europe? We will start with Roberta and Paolo sharing their screen. This is our team, so I forgot in the, the, the <laughs> to, to show it, show it, to show them. Um, so the the future. Um, in my humble opinion, I, I think um, in the, the the places in the neighborhoods that uh, like uh, Casal Ventoso, like uh, this neighborhood, there are a lot of traffic and a, a lot of people buying and using drugs. The the model that we have here. It's uh, already the the it's uh, yet the, the the right model. Um, the but we have to go and to to the places that that aren't so big, but they have um, people uh, injecting and consuming drugs. So I suppose not so um, expensive projects, uh, but we must have uh, safe places to people to. To consume, and that uh, probably not with uh, the stuff like nursing and doctors and uh, this uh, this kind of expensive team, but like peers and educators uh, all around the, the city, all around the city where where are consumption, of course. Uh, perhaps this is the the future. Um, uh, we are talking about uh, that situation um, the other day, and perhaps in the places that um, are the people goes to um, to to drink or to to go to the night to, to consume some cocaine or methamphetamines probably some uh, mobile vans uh, nearby to to people consuming in, in the safe way so i suppose it's one of the ideas for the future So I would like to, to reinforce uh, the idea that it's, it's very important, like uh, Atanasio said before, that it's very important to meet the needs of people who, who use drugs. Uh, and I think it's very important to be aware of the changing of the routes uh, of substance administration. And uh, like I said before, in our experience, we have, we have the majority of our population um, smokes and smokes crack, uh, crack cocaine. So I think it's very important to be aware of this change in the routes and, and try to create uh, uh, facilities that uh, support this, these kind of uh, needs. And I, I think we have to, to think about this uh, for the future. Thank you. Um, I give the floor to, no, are you talking? No, give the floor to Athanasius. Okay, so uh, our thoughts on the next steps uh, is to, that we need more DCRs in the at least in major cities uh, of Greece, uh, one of that city is uh, Thessaloniki, and uh, especially is very uh, easy to use mobile ones because uh, we can put uh, into action in uh, different places and to meet uh, much more needs of people. Uh, in Athens, we have also concluded and we are in a phase of, let's say, final materialization of uh, this project, the five mobile DCRs that we are going to uh, work with the municipality of Athens and the support of the mayor of Athens, uh, which will work 24-7. Uh, and uh, it, they might uh, start working by the end of this year. So this is a news that we will have very 
in the next month. Uh, also, the drug checking is another issue that is concerning us as well in the DCRs, and uh, we are trying to find out ways how to 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 see the trends and the, all the new drugs that are coming uh, within the field, and especially through the all this uh, situation with the Ukraine war and all these uh, changes that are happening uh, worldwide. And uh, my point uh, is uh, the need for monitoring all this work that we do. The work is need to be uh, evaluated and evaluated through uh, an evidence-based uh, thought. Uh, which will support us, uh, will support, <coughs> sorry, will support our work uh, to the stakeholders to communicate all the productivity of these programs. Uh, it, this is very crucial because when we go and we discuss with them, they, the first thing that they ask, okay, uh, what's the good thing and what's the bad thing but they don't uh, they, they they don't see very uh, often the good things and the uh, all the development that might come uh, better with uh, the opening or the functioning of uh, uh, this year of course uh, we we would like to have this kind of uh, communication through the all the dcrs in uh, europe and uh, a digital platform would uh, be very helpful in order to connect uh, all our uh, DCR network across Europe and to share all this uh, data, uh, either real time or in specific uh, period times, uh, all the best practices and all the challenges that we face every day, every time, uh, which will make us even better. And uh, we will uh, try to find out other ways of thinking sometimes in order to solve problems. Uh, and as I told you before, there is an, a real need uh, uh, to, to monitor all the new substances that emerge in now in Europe. And uh, since all these routes are uh, changing, we have to see it as well. So I think all the network, and this is the, 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 the thing that all this technical meeting that we have these days and the, this webinar comes out to, to bring to us and to help us is all this network and this communication of the messages and the problems that we have and how we can face them. That's why we thank EMCDTA and all of you, the organizers, and we are here to discuss. Thank you very much, Noelia. Yeah. Um... So when I have to think about the future of, of DCRs, um, I think that's, that's super important to have in, in, to keep in mind the political strategies. Um, Barcelona, as I say, no, um, have the, um, the key point that all the, the political um, parts have to be in, in accord, no? but all the political strategies have to be in the same way always because if it doesn't go in the same way it cannot run it's it's it can be so much difficult for us um we have to keep in mind the dynamic reality and the new trends on drug use we have to think all the time in this dynamic reality and in three in three months it can change everything in in two years and a half um the profile that uh, p woods that i see in the drug consumption room changing we have now the 13% of, of the consensus on the DCR um, based on methamphetamine. We changed to have only two people uh, taking methamphetamine in 2015, I think. And in 2022, we have 247 people taking methamphetamine. So in a short time, it can change. Everything can change. So. Um, we have to keep in mind the community resistances and mass media and how to deal with it all the time. And we have to work and we have to keep in mind all the time um, the stigma. We have, to, we have to create strategies to fight and to face the stigma 
all the time. So how can we do this? We have to to question all the roles, the role, the DCA role, the pivot role, the politician's role, the institution role, the community role. We have to ask um, ourselves all the time, which is my role? All the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. I, I need to question myself every time. I need to question my service every time. I need to question my politicians every time, every day. It's it's super important. Don't don't lose this this um, role approach. And then um, my proposals, because we have to to think about solutions and and proposals. It's that we need to optimize the harm reduction model and harm reduction facilities to the new trends, to the new needs, to the new, um, to the new demands. Um, we have to think all the time in how to open this year's 24-7. Casual um, World uh, runs since 7 in the morning at 10 on the night and only close the Christmas Day and the New Year's Day. Day. All, all the other days we are open and it's not enough because we close at 10, but until 10 to 7 in the morning, the people still taking drugs and still taking drugs in the night, in unsafety places, in hostile places, in risky places. Um, so we have to think about that. We cannot offer attention only for no, only for an hour. And, and when I close, you have to stop to take drugs now. They're gonna keep taking drugs, so we have to think about that, and we have to think about how make a, a good and successfully community engagement. That's super complicated, but we have to we have to think about that all the time, and how to make social and health system engagement. Uh, our clients, the pivots, have a lot of needs and have a lot of complicated situations, and they. Um, they faced a lot of risks and a lot of complicated situations every day, and we need to, to search solutions and we need to search engagement with the social and health system. We have to, to work in group all the time. So I think that these are the, the main topics to, to think about if we have to think about the future of this year. So thank you. Thank you, Noelia. Thank you to all the invited panelists. I um, thank you very much for this insight in the different realities with at the end seem very similar and are easy to bring to a common point. You talked all about integration, considering community and health services and other services. You talk all about evaluation. You have all raised the point of communication among us. I think that's um, a very nice insight in the reality of drug consumption rooms in, in Europe. And I would like to give now the floor to Marek Ferry to help us a bit with the question and answers that we have in the chat. Yes, thank you very much. There is a huge debate in the chat, but this is visible to everybody. So very interesting. We will save the chat for, for future uh, reading. Um, I grouped some of the questions. Um, one is about, uh, it was easier to uh, highlight the need for drug consumption rooms when they address opioid use, and, and the environment was full of dirty syringes, et cetera, et cetera. The question is now that the consumption rooms have changed, opening to other type of, of substances, is still clear their function, especially to decision makers? I think, Isia, if you agree, we can launch the question and see who, who is willing to provide an answer. I have many more. <laughs> So, Paolo. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in, in the Portuguese reality, uh, I think the um, that the in the beginning the, the that uh, decreasing of uh, consumption in uh, of people that inject drugs uh, it's really make a, a point to not opening the, the DCRs but um, I suppose that uh, kind of idea is changing and what we saw is 
it took 20 years, but the, the, the DCR is now open. And uh, I suppose everybody is happy with uh, our results, our achievement, because we have, uh, like Roberta said, perhaps uh, 300 people in one year, we have uh, 1,300 uh, and in one year. So um, the, the problem is bigger than uh, everybody thought. And uh, I suppose the, the decision makers in, in Portugal are, uh, uh, have the, the, they know that the, the, the reality is change. So I suppose they, they know that the, 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 the needs of the DCR, it's, um, it's, it's different from the 20 years ago. And I suppose here in Portugal, the people know that. Anybody else who would like to, to add something or, because we have many other interesting questions. Any other comments on this? Um, I'd, I'd like only to, to, to add that um, I, I understand the question because uh, in the beginning, the, the, the main objective of the, the DCRs uh, are for people who inject drugs. And right now it's a little bit different, but the problem uh, is still there, still there. So we still have people that uh, smoke uh, in an in a unsafety condition, uh, in not clean places, not safe places with many, many, many other uh, difficult circumstances. So I think it, it's, uh, it's too important. It's too important to, to have this kind of place because some of them are very disorganized. Some of them uh, don't have any kinds of uh, condition of hygiene. Don't, don't, uh, um, the, only, the only meal that they have is here with us uh, in, the, in this place. So I think it's very, it's very important, it's not only for for the consumption room, but for the, the integrated service that we offer too. So I, I think we have to, to, to have this mindset. Thank, Thank you, you very much. There is a testimony from the Netherlands where there are consumption rooms, but the, the colleague says the negotiation with the local community to have them accepted is a continuous process. It's not something that you do once forever, especially when you open new uh, drug consumption rooms. And then there are a couple of questions on the relations with the other services, for example, with the treatment services, if there are exchanges of people passing through, uh, for example, drug consumption rooms and then going to treatment and vice versa, people in treatment and then go. I don't know who would like to, to answer this. <clears throat> We as uh, Okana, the Organization Against Drugs in uh, Greece, we have um, uh, all the, the treatment from the direct access to the OST treatment. So we have lots of cases that uh, come by and uh, use the DCR and uh, they are supported in order to uh, have this uh, referral to a, a treatment program. The treatment program uh, it's not always an OST. It will be. It might be also with no uh, medicine program, but uh, lots of them go to a treatment program with the OST. Uh, some of them also come back and they go to the field again and they have this drug use uh, again and they have this recurring uh, behavior but uh, there is also th there is also this networking through the services of our organization for example who uh, they follow the the person the beneficiary and they follow him uh, whenever uh, wherever the, the, its need is so we can uh, help him to uh, be supported for the safer use, we support them for them for the safer use. We support them for uh, hygiene and uh, social issues, and then we go to thera therapeutic issues and continue with the therapy or and OST treatment. Thank you. I don't know if anybody else wants to add something, or I go ahead because I would like to ask you all the questions. We won't be able. Um, if nobody interrupts me, I go ahead. Um, one of the questions is about 
you mentioned already in your interventions, but if you can summarize with one statement, how drug consumption rooms contribute to reducing stigma? Whoa. <laughs> how we can contribute to reduce the stigma. So that's a big question. Um, we have some strategies in, in, in my drug consumption room um, focused on the participation of the um, drug users on the community activities. So we try to make popular dinners, we try to make um, activities with, uh, with the neighbors, we try to make uh, social photographies to see it on the community and um, we try to um, now for example now uh, i'm making a, a plan to dynamite to make a dynamization of the um, community around the dcr and then i want to involve one drug user who is who is um i don't know what's the name in english but who, who are involved in in the maintenance of public spaces when they when he are working, and and I want to involve this person in the in the strategic plan about the on the neighborhood. So we try to to make that they are present in the decisions and and visibilize it on the community. But it's not an easy work because they have a lot of stigma. Thank you very much. While we speak, other questions. Uh, perhaps <laughs> right. I will. Yes. Yes. Go can ahead. Can I uh, say something about it? Um, before the, the implementation of the, our DCR, uh, our clients um, told us that in, the, in the, the street, in the neighborhood, they, the people from the community, sometimes they, they don't treat him right. They uh, take garbage on him. So, uh, and with the DC implementation of the DCR and the, the consumptions inside the DCR, they tell us now the people at the neighborhood treat, treat us better. So it's it's uh, it's an I think it's an important uh, thing that uh, um, important thing to to the, our clients. So. Very good. There are there is, there are two questions that I will put together, because one is about what to do in rural areas. So where the use is dispersed and you don't have probably strong support to having one. But the other is in, in mention a big uh, Central European uh, town saying that the use is still visible in the street. So how you manage these two extreme situations? Who would like to <laughs> address this difficult question? Composed question. <laughs> Uh, Marika, uh, we in Greece, we have uh, the opportunity that we lately developed uh, three mobile units uh, in uh, the rural area, uh, which are outreach, mostly outreach units, uh, meaning that they are uh, doing harm reduction actions. So we go to Patras, to Tripolis, and to uh, Rethno, to Crete, an, a big island that we have. And we have also uh, another unit in uh, Thessaloniki. So we try to go and have this uh, re uh, harm reduction work uh, in order to help these people to find out the safer use and to be educated how they should make their use and uh, how they should be uh, supported by our organization and, and the uh, opportunity to have this opportunity of uh, entering a therapeutic uh, program. Uh, this is a new entry, so we have a very good effect since now. Uh, lots of people are coming and asking for our help and this uh, has a um, a very positive effect to society because society there in small towns comes and uh, realize uh, the 
immediate action that we have. For example, in Thessaloniki, uh, as Mr. Guzdel has seen uh, by, its, uh, by himself, we have this kind of problem and we try to make some uh, cooperation among people and organizations that are working in the field in order to solve all this kind of problem and the, solve the problem as well uh, of um, uh, housing, which is also a problem that uh, concerns this uh, these people, uh, our population. So uh, the the effort is um, um, more combined with many 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 uh, uh, small uh, actions, little actions uh, in harm reduction, in housing, in social care, in social uh, support, as well as primary health care support, which is very crucial to our work. And uh, in cities, let's say, it's a little bit different because we have to solve this uh, stigma uh, problem. And uh, uh, the, the, the case of Athens, I would like to tell you that uh, we put the politicians into the game. For example, we had MPs coming to do street working. We had ministers, street working. We had the president of the Hellenic Republic coming to the DCR, which is very, it's enormous to have the first citizen of the country to support this kind of action. So people started using these words and you could go around through the, the corridors in the ministries and uh, hearing words like CISA or like uh, drugs or like harm reduction or like other issues that are concerning us and uh, things that you couldn't before 10 years, 10 years ago, you couldn't imagine that you would hear this kind of uh, wording or discussions. So this turned into changing all these uh, concepts and all these uh, uh, culture that we have, we we need a lot of job, a, a lot of work to do. But okay, it's a, a point that we have started. Thank you very much, and I take an opportunity to ask our director <laughs> the last question. Uh, there are there are many uh, still, and I, I I suspect we will need another webinar, probably this time with uh, experiences from the northern countries. This time we have seen the southern, and then we will see another area. There are a couple of questions on the international documents and the drug consumption rooms, uh, specifically, for example, the UNGAS outcome document. If uh, drug consumption rooms are given uh, the sufficient visibility that, that they deserve. Uh, Alexis, if you don't mind, I would ask you to, to see if you wish to answer and then, and then to give your conclusions. Uh, thank you, Marika. Well, of course, I mind, uh, because if not, uh, I would not have uh, supported the organization of the webinar. So, of course, uh, I mind a lot. Uh, and I care. Uh, so uh, th there was a, a part already a good answer from Danilo Balota, uh, making reference to a document that is available and that we can make available to all of you together with the, the link to the video after this webinar. Uh, the other things uh, I, I want also to, to cheer our colleague and friend uh, Werder Zip, who's the former uh, chair of the International Narcotic Control Board because the INCB uh, has, uh, has uh, at least sent a, a written letter a declaration uh, declaring uh, that uh, drug consumption rooms and decriminalization were not in contravention uh, with the UN conventions, uh, provided that it takes place without a, a more comprehensive uh, program and strategy uh, on drugs uh, by, the, by the UN member states. So basically, uh, it's not like uh, officially adopted uh, by all member states of the UN document still. Uh, it's the INCB, not only its chair. And uh, it, what is interesting is that it has not been always fully supported, but at the same time, it has not been really challenged by the successors of Werner. So Werner, I think we all, you, we all owe you a lot uh, to you and the NCB, INCB of that time for that statement, but that's extremely important. 
And, and I would say that uh, uh, sometimes we had the opportunity at uh, CMCDD to share this document, uh, to, to highlight, to explain, and also to help reduce the anxiety of some decision makers who were believing that uh, maybe it would be like uh, legalizing any kind of drugs or things like that. So, so, so it's not the final miraculous solution, but that's, that's certainly a key document. Um, then uh, for, for the comment, first, I would like to, to thank uh, all of you, uh, including all the, the old people who have followed this webinar. Actually, yes, I think, uh, Marika, you're right. We need to continue. Uh, we probably will need a, a few other uh, webinars, not only one. Um, I, I will not try to summarize everything, but still a, a few comments and a few answers. Uh, the, the first is uh, what was highlighted uh, in many cases in all the presentations, but in from all the work we do on DCRs for so many years, it's the key role of the mayors and the city level. Uh, and, and in the meeting today uh, in Lisbon, we, we are privileged to have uh, two representatives from the uh, even younger, sorry, Athanasios, there is an even more new DCR than yours. It is the Brussels one. Uh, uh, we have also a representative from Liège, and those are two cities where the mayor has played a key role because those are officially established, but at the same time, they are still officially illegal. And to answer to the fears of some colleagues, Liège is such a avant-gardist city for many things. It's in the edge that we opened in Belgium more than well 30 years ago, the first needle exchange program, for instance. Uh, uh, the, the drug consumption room is just the building nearby the police of the city. And, uh, and as people are used, and the police is well aware of uh, the importance of harm reduction interventions, basically they don't take the opportunity to to chase the, the, the drug users, uh, the bad guys, and, uh, and the drug users feel comfort and, uh, comfortable and they trust the system because it's not the first time that this kind of intervention. So the role of the mayor and his team and everybody involved, and I think it's the same for Barcelona and all the other cities and Lisbon, of course, including not only the old, but the new mayor, uh, the new president of the Camara Municipal, I, I think it's, they play a very important role. They also take an important political risk, not only in Belgium. So, so this is why, the, as Athanasios was saying, the, uh, the evaluation is important. And, and uh, uh, to answer to this first comment from Athanasios, uh, I want to say that one of the things we are discussing today and, and tomorrow, and we work on it at the MCDD for a while already, is that we are working together uh, to build uh, tools su to support uh, DCRs to build their evaluation uh, scheme. I think that's extremely important that we as the European agency, we can provide the support because there are plenty of uh, people uh, promoting evaluation, but it's not whatever evaluation. It has to be an evaluation that is applied to the reality of the DCRs and that allows to highlight what works, what doesn't work, without sometimes uh, proposing objectives that are completely unrealistic or that are not within the reach of, of the DCR. So that's one of the things we started already working on that. And, and uh, one of the new initiatives we have launched already last year is also uh, that we want to, dev to help develop tools and support to evaluation, not only in the English language and culture. And this is why for the moment, there is a small project ongoing uh, with the French speaking uh, DCRs uh, with the help of uh, a member of scientific committee that is uh, Marie Geoffrey Roustide. Uh, and uh, we hope to, to develop further also for other languages from other experiences in the future. Uh, the, the second point uh, that was also highlighted and basically I was reading uh, an article in Le Monde the day before yesterday, it's the, it's uh, the, the problem of stigma, the problem of not in my backyard, but, but which also relates to the need uh, for strong community, community work. Uh, and and I, I think there, there, certainly there is no magic solution, but this is an area where we, we as CMCDD, we can play a role also to raise the, the awareness of national decision makers. Because basically the problem of the communities is not only about drug services. 
it's, it's more a general problem of fragmented communities. And some of you who have been participating in the other webinars, especially the first ones we organized on COVID, you highlighted very well that, uh, like also colleagues from uh, professional associations like UNAS in Spain, you say, what has been allowing us to be useful was the fact that there are also social services, health services. And we need, as many of you have said, we need to also engage with the institutions. Uh, but certainly, community work uh, is, is something that is not really new. We, we started talking about this in, the, in Europe 30 years ago. Uh, and I remember some of the first who started talking about this was Espoir Goudor in Paris. Uh, and, and the funny thing is that uh, it's not the French who have brought the idea. It's the, the, the Latinos and the Africans who were living in Paris and in Espoir Goudor who brought the experience from those countries where community work involving the community was working or was existing sometimes also for mental health. We, we had some developments 20, 25, 30 years ago, suddenly the fashion has disappeared. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but, but certainly the, there is a paradox today. If you look at Paris with the situation of crack uh, use, there is a huge political problem, which apparently on the top of that is not very new. There is a pressure from the citizen towards the authorities to do something. And the authorities, they try to react very quickly. But to take the decision to open a DCR or any kind, even uh, I read in the Le Monde yesterday that even to open drug services, people are opposing that for the moment in some cities. So this means there is a contradiction. We need a quick solution or quick support from the minister. And when the minister say, yes, let's open four DCRs, all the social process, the consultation, the consultation, the involvement of the community, you cannot do that in two weeks or in two months. Um, so we, we have, a, there is a pressure for results and for interventions, but not in my backyard. And without having always the time to take, the time to consult, to inform, to raise awareness. So, so that's something to which at European level, we, we could also propose uh, and offer support. I will finish on that in a few minutes. So uh, the importance of the involvement in the association of people who are using drugs, there were comments in the in the chat. And of course, we, we fully support that. And also including people who are using drugs uh, and more broadly the, the, uh, the, so the civil society. Um, I think what, what is interesting and we see this idea, there's some evolution in the last years. I think we, we need to, to have a kind to build uh, together a kind of versatile uh, model. Because basically, uh, fixed uh, or static drug consumption room cannot be the right answer for everything. Uh, and, and to combine together with other services and with mobile services is something that maybe five years ago, nobody would have been really thinking about this. But, but maybe this is something that can be used also in, in with the aim of uh, reaching at least some consensus with people. Because maybe those who are against the idea to have uh, even a treatment center in their street, uh, maybe it's only a bus that stops for half an hour and then is going to another place, can be a first step in trying to raise awareness, showing that it will not create a, a, a very challenging situation. Also, people need to be reminded that uh, in most of the places where DCRs have been established, it is because there was a problem on site, there were public noises, there was an open scene. And this, I think this is still a good argument to avoid to create a, a DCR, yes, but 30 kilometers from the center, far from the center of the city because people will not go. Then uh, another important point is uh, the mental health, not only of uh, people and the clients of the, the DCRs, but the staff. Uh, I remember a discussion we had uh, uh, in uh, Madness Gym, I hope I pronounce well the, the DCR in Copenhagen, where uh, we were discussing that for the nurses that stay in the room and see people who are injecting all the day and sometimes with very difficult behaviors, if you do that eight hours a day, uh, I don't know how long you can just 
be resilient. So uh, as uh, as uh, Paulo was saying, we, we need to find uh, a way to, to provide some support, some supervision, uh, and also uh, something we discussed with Athanasios and many other colleagues the recent months is uh, there are many programs, including those fantastic innovative programs in Greece that are just being running with resources provided by some EU or other programs that will end up in six months, in one year. Uh, and the, the sustainability of those programs, again, that's, that's a, a great challenge. And we need to see together how we can together raise the awareness of decision makers. It's good to have a pilot with the staff being co-financed by some external donors. But at some stage, we, we need to make sure that if it works, if it is really addressing the needs, we need to make sure that there is a, a stable financing. It can be involved, it can be involving the municipality and the national or the regional level. Uh, but certainly there is a danger for some of those programs that they may be very successful and very useful. Still, they may have to stop. And then um, uh, to finish, um, I would like to, to mention, uh, to come back to the, to the two points made by Athanasios and one by Noela. Uh, Athanasios mentioned the need for monitoring and for uh, evaluation. I answered already about evaluation. Uh, the platform, this is what we announced last year that the MCDDA uh, is, uh, is uh, started the development, the extension, the expansion of a digital platform for communicating uh, with uh, uh, the, the organizations involved in bill checking, but also uh, uh, in the in the residues of syringes. And, and there is uh, there was already last year a clear offer made to expand this digital platform to the uh, DCRs. What we are going to discuss today and tomorrow is uh, how concretely we can use the budget and the platform what are the specifications and how together with the DCRs we can build and also make sure that not only is not EMCDDA offering something, is together we build and together we can use and where we need also to offer all the guarantees for people who are participating and communicating through the platform that uh, all the, the highest possible security is guaranteed. And then uh, Noela was saying that we need to actualize the harm reduction model and the harm reduction facilities. Noela, uh, I cannot uh, agree more uh, with you than on that because uh, that's one of the things we discussed at the European Harm Reduction, reduction Conference last, uh, last November in Prague. I think time has come to reinvent harm reduction and to reinvent, we need to build on the scientific evidence and on the data that we can also receive from the DCRs or the pill checking showing that drug and drug use today is much more than just heroin injection. And therefore, we need to update the understanding we have the problem, and we need to be, again, more creative, uh, because I think the key is, uh, and that's my last word and the conclusion, at least for, for this webinar that I propose you, I think we need to come back to the understanding of the risk behaviors. So it's not only harm reduction in English, Harm is uh, perceived from those non-native English speakers sometimes as a bit limitative. In French, we speak about risk reduction, which means not only the consequences of use, but everything around. And I think there are risks associated to other uses uh, that uh, may need to be or could be addressed with the help of the DCRs. And I think that's very great to see so many changes uh, and so much flexibility in the models of DCRs that we see all over Europe. So again, we are there together with you at your side, uh, partner for co-production, for reinventing in the future harm reduction to make sure that also all decision makers understand that harm reduction today and especially tomorrow, it cannot be only, for instance, needle exchange or methadone substitution. So we need continuity, but we need also creativity and co-production. And that's what we managed to do fantastically with your help today. And we continue for those two days with the conference of the DCR program. So from all side and on behalf of all our colleagues, thank you very much. Thank you very much to you, Alexis. And talking about uh, platforms, <laughs> there is an entire debate uh, in the chat and many other interesting questions in the questions and answer. 
that we are uh, uh, saving and, and keeping for further uh, discussion. In the meanwhile, I, I, I switched on the camera of Alessandro Pirona so that you also see him, the organizer of this meeting. And I would like to thank everybody, really, uh, including the Dragon Central Rooms, who has hosted this broadcasting, and Alexis for his many ideas, who prevents us from getting bored with, <laughs> with our work. <laughs> And, and thank you, everybody. I will launch a small poll to know your ideas. Uh, no worries, the speakers can go. Uh, and I keep the system open a little bit more to avoid excluding people abruptly. But you can go if you wish. Thank you very much.